sir. How are you? <clears throat> How you doing today? I pray you're doing good today. Hey, sir. How you doing? Let me get some music. I'm turning down really low so that YouTube doesn't get me. I pray you guys had a good day. How are you guys doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm not feeling so hot to chat, but it's all good. Hey, sister. These kids out here in the street trying to get sick. Hey, DJ. <clears throat> but it's all good. We'll be better tomorrow. How are you guys doing? Did you have a good day? Oh, that's loud. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I don't do flu shots and stuff. I just got to get my, um, get my um, immune system, get it ready. Hey, 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 I love you, sister. Um, yeah, get your, get your life, like get your vitamins and stuff. Certainly if you have kids and, you know, hey, sister, you know, disinfect. I really need to disinfect my car, like my steering wheel and stuff. I think that's, that's what's up. Hey, sister. Yes, it's so good to see you. Hey, Chastity. Um, see, I'm all up in my face. When I'm in my car and then whatever's going on, because y'all know it's like, um, yeah, elderberry is good for that. I, I have some. I have some, but I try to give it to It comes in such a little small thing. And so I use it for maintenance, not for the onset, right? Hey, sister. It's the, um, it's the fall also has like allergies and stuff. And so like if you scratch your eye, and so I need to disinfect my car. Like I have a, I need to make a spray to spray down the steering wheel and the door handles and stuff. I think that's a place that we really miss out is our car and our steering wheel. Like we put our hands on doors and you know what I'm saying? Hey, Wari. Hey, Sandrika. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably, you know, that's what happened. Like people put their hands on your car door then you put your hands on there, then you're driving and then you touch your phone and then you're digging in your face. And yeah, so no, I'm gonna spray it down. I spray down everything. I spray down my phone and everything. I just, uh, I don't know. So it's all good. We'll be, we'll be back at it tomorrow. Hey, man of God, how are you? Do you guys, uh, I was, I was looking for music, but I give up. So y'all have your pen and paper. We're getting ready to go over, um, the consecration. Y'all ready to do, to do this? Y'all want music? <clears throat> Y'all want music? Y'all will that lighten the load? Will that lighten? Oh, thank you, sister. I'm ready for my braids to be redone. Anyway, yeah, you know, Shasta, YouTube is coming for me. Like I wake up to, you know, <sighs> there's been a copyright thing put on your YouTube channel. There's been a copyright thing put on your YouTube channel. I'd be like, man. Oh, thank you. Y'all are sweet. I love you all. All right, so let's hop into it. I can't even hear it. All right, let me know when y'all are ready. We about to do this. Consecration 2018, baby. All right, so number one, this is not religious. This is not religious. Yes, this is going to take discipline. Yes, this is not going to be the easiest thing you've ever done in the world. But it's not going to be the hardest thing you've done either. You can do you can do anything for 90 days. You've been doing it. Um, I, I am. You can do anything for 90 days. You've been doing anything for 90 days because you've gone through three quarters of the year. So you've done 90 days a few times, right? So don't look at it as 90 days. Just look at it as day to day to day to day. So every day... That's why you're going to write this stuff down as we're talking about it. Every day, you're accomplishing that day. That's it. You're not thinking about tomorrow. You're not thinking about December 1, <laughs> December 29th, December 31st. Nope. You're just thinking about October the 2nd. That's it. And, and you're just going to accomplish that day. Once you get through October the 2nd, let it go. Move into October the 3rd. It's day by day by day. Because sometimes what will happen is you'll have really great weeks and then you'll get to a week that's really stressful and you'll be like, but I have these great weeks and I did it and now I'm failing. Oh, I'm a failure. No, 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 no. Day to day to day, right? And so enjoy, enjoy this process, right? Enjoy this process 
of getting to know the Father and engaging the Father all over again. That, and that's all this is about. This is about Him. This is not about giving up the food. This is not about praying, right? Um, at all sorts of different times of day. This is not about the rigor. This is about the Father, right? And so the same way your kids you know, trample through the house and they do things, you leave water on the counter, muds on the wall, right? As a parent, you don't, you, you, you just, you may say, hey, get the mud off the wall, but you still love them. It's okay, right? And so it's the same with, same with the father. It's all about relationship. And this is about relationship. This is about revisiting. And, and even when we get into the harder things, because when I lay out the themes and stuff, y'all gonna be like a little bit. But anyway, it's all this is about is relationship. This is about relationship, relationship, relationship. And so if you set your phone, um, like I do it every hour, but if you set it like every five hours where your phone goes off, the alarm goes off three times in your work day um, to pray, and that prayer is only like 10 minutes long, it's about relationship. That's it. And so even if you just sit there and you just sit in the presence of God, in that moment, in that work day, that's all it's about. And so every moment starts over again. That's what this is about. Every time you sit down, every time you sit down to a meal and you see that bread isn't there or sweets isn't there, it's not about the bread, it's not about the sweets, it's about the Father. It's about the father, right? And so when you're struggling with the bread or the sweets or whatever, and even when you fall off, eat it in the presence of God, <laughs> right? Even if you mess up, mess up in the presence of God. Hey, sister, y'all hear me? If, if you're like, I can't, I want my coffee today. Then when you make your coffee, you sit down in the presence of God and you talk about what's going on. Mess up in the presence of God. When you get done, say, okay, I need help in this area because God... I just, you know, I, I, this, I said I was going to do this and I'm trying my best and I messed up today and I'm not feeling it today and this is me and you. It's relationship, right? It's relationship. And so God is going to be your biggest accountability partner. Christ is going to be your biggest accountability partner because this is about your walk with Christ. This is about your 2018 with Christ. This is about your 2019 with Christ. This is about relationship. So this is not about religion this is not about the rigor. So I just want you to just fling that off because that's going to make the 90 days. God wants us to enjoy. I need you to see this, the feast of fasting, the feast of setting our face to the wall. This is a feast of love. This is a feast of worship. This is going to be a feast of prayer. This is going to be a feast of revelation. This is making sense because it's going to be built on the premise of relationship and that's it. Okay, and so even when we get on Zooms and we talk about, they going in. Okay, anyway, let me stop. Um, <laughs> let me turn it down. <laughs> um, when we get on, and maybe, you know, um, I may slip up and say, I'm really going to try and not to say some of the things that I'm doing. Because I want you to do your own stuff. I want you to put down what, what we talk about tonight. I need you to write it all down. What you decide, take it before the Father. Ask him to breathe on it. Anything that God breathes on, there's going to be anointing for you to fight your way through. There's going to be an anointing to fight your way into the rest of God, right? So that's number one. We don't want to just start something and say, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to serve you. This is my decision on how I'm going to serve you. <laughs> and then when we do that, I'm going to do a fast. And then Isaiah God says, I ain't called for that fast you're doing. What you doing? <laughs> right? Right? This is not the fast. So we, we're just going to, we're writing down what we think. And then you're going to submit it to the Father. And you're going to say, okay, God, this is what I, I, I would like to do. But I'm submitting it to you. And so when he, if he tweaks it, if he's like, you know what? I want you to do this, this, and this, then just do it. Even if it feels like it's just beyond your reach, God is expanding you and he's going to teach you that you can do it because you're going to rely on the father. And so even in this, you're not going to lead to your own understanding, but in all of your ways in this 90 day consecration, 
You're going to acknowledge him and he is going to direct your path right now inside of this 90 day consecration. He's going to direct your path inside of this 90 day consecration. It's going to have its moments. You know, when you get up and we're about to go into the cold months. When you get up, when let me talk about me because I don't like to sleep with the heat because, you know, we anyway, when you get up at three o'clock in the morning and it's freezing. That is not, <laughs> that's not easy. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. And so when you sit down, when I'm talking about me, when I sit down before the father, I may have a little bit of attitude because I'm cold. This is not fun right now, right? That's just flesh stuff. It's just emotion stuff. And that's okay. So there's going to be moments like that. There's going to be moments like that. Hey, sister, right? So it's okay. But here's the thing. This is not about religion. This is relationship. All right. So I need that. I need you to keep that in the forefront of your mind. And even when you invite people to do this, this is a, this is not about doing something to do something and to say that we did this. This is, this is just to do it, to say that this is what God said to do. And this is what we did out of obedience. Amen. Amen. All right. So y'all ready? So there are three themes and they all go deeper and deeper and deeper into each other. Okay. Y'all ready? So the three are, cause I prayed, I prayed about this, <clears throat> but it's again, not, not religious. If the father gives you something else, baby, go with that. Okay. October, we're going to concentrate on the reset. R E S E T reset. In November, we're going to concentrate on the reveal. And in December, we're going to concentrate on the release. That's going to be the theme. And they all move in. So we, we have to start with the reset. And then we're going to go into the reveal. And then we're going to go into the release. Okay? So the reset, what this looks like is that's the theme. The tone is going to be worship. The tone is going to be worship. And so we're, we're going to go through the book of Psalms. It's like five a day, plus whatever the Lord is, is having you to study on the side. The book of Psalms. Teach us to fear you, O oh God. Teach us to fear you, O oh God. So we're, we're going to reset. We're resetting. And before we move into the place of the reveal or the place of wisdom, we need there to be the foundation of worship, right? So we're putting, we're making sure, we're making sure that God is sitting on the only throne and we are dethroning any ideology, we're dethroning any expectation, we're, de we're dethroning any self-based truth, we're dethroning any sabotage, we're dethroning any of those things. And so worship is the thing that brings highlight onto the areas that don't look like God. When I focus on God and I see him and his magnanimous and his glorious nature, then it's easy for me to see the things that don't align with who he is in me, around me, through me, right? As I focus on him. So the first 30 days is going to be dealing with resetting in worship. So we're going to be going through the Psalms, right? In November, we're going to be dealing with now that we're going to pull October in to November with us. When we talked about this, even with the fasting from food, it's the same thing. Pulling the foundation of October, pulling the foundation of worship. Now we're going to couple worship. We're going to couple the reset worship with the reveal wisdom. So now we're going to go through the book of Proverbs, Psalms and Proverbs. So you're going to take the rebel. Are you following me? You're going to take the revelation that God has poured out, right? The revelation that God's poured out in your worship. And now you're going to pull those themes. You're going to pull those, the, that, that, that sound and you're going to couple it with the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God. And so now we're getting, we're making ourselves ready to go into December, which is now it's time to do the work. Now my foundation is wisdom and worship. My foundation is worship and wisdom and the last cord that's going to bind all of these things together is going to be the word, right? 
And so December is the month of re is the month of release of the work, the assignment, the courage, the confidence that was birthed in worship, that was birthed in wisdom, and now I'm ready to set out and do the work of the kingdom. Um, I, everything worship has a way of clearing out and cleaning out the riverbeds. It has a way of cleaning out and clearing out the pipe. Now God is getting ready to filter in clean water through those pipes. Is it making sense? New ideas, fresh ideas, new identity, assignment identity, territorial identity, your identity. It's, it's, you're going to have flat, fresh water flowing through a, a clean pipe. And now you're going to know where this water is supposed to go, what you're supposed to be doing. And so now you, in, in December, you're going to be making the plans, right? You're going to be making the plans. And so what December looks like. In terms of word, as you're pulling Psalms, you're pulling Proverbs, and now you, we are going to be crafting and making our decrees for the whole of 2019. We're going to be praying. When we get on the, when we get on those Zooms in December, December is going to be really intense with prayer. That's what I'm sensing. Prayer and decrees. We're going to be pulling the revelation that we've all got because we've all got a different piece of the Father. We can never handle all of the Father. And so it's revealed through people. So when we come together and Rose is not on, but when she says, well, this is what the Father showed me and you put that on. Oh, okay. Now I see another side of God or he adds weight. Come on, guys, to a revelation that he poured out in you. And so now as we begin sharing, we begin to see this large your model, this larger context of his presence. Hallelujah. And so in December now, we're going to be praying the coupling of October and November, right? And we're going to be focusing, this is really good, we did Psalms and Proverbs, now we're really going to be going through the, hey Dr. Kim, through the, through the, the Gospels. We're going to be focusing on Jesus. Focusing on worship, focusing, come on guys, wisdom and work. And this is the embodiment of Jesus. Are y'all seeing that? And so we are going to be searching the scriptures of how Jesus did, how Jesus walked, how Jesus talked, how Jesus handled, how Jesus planned through the worship. Is this good? Through the wisdom. And now we're not saying this is 2019 is not going to be the year that we worked in our own strength. 2019 is going to be the year that we worked in the model of Jesus. 2019 is where we're going to study our mentor. Come on, guys. 2019 is where we're going to study our pastor. 2019 is where we're going to study our prophet. 29, come on guys. 2019 is where we're going to study uh, the missionary. 2019 is where we're going to study the intercessor. 20, are y'all seeing this? Right? And so when we study Jesus and we see him as he's walking, as he's moving in worship and in wisdom, all of his work comes from that. He, everything he does is worship, but he does it with such a wisdom. He leans down, takes a stick, and he begins to write in the sand, in the dirt, right? Come on, guys. It's wisdom. It's with how do I tailor my words? Because I understand what they're trying to do right here. Because my worship, my communion time with the Father has already given me deep insight into the hearts of these men. Hallelujah. And so a lot of times, you know, we think we're supposed to pop off and we supposed we've been like, oh, come on then, you know, act crazy. But Jesus didn't do that. And so sometimes we just take a moment and study the person of Jesus and we can put on the mind of Christ. Amen. So in December, we're going to be taking what we've gleaned, what we've learned, what we've eaten. We're going to be making it into um, a model that we can live in and live through, through the person of Jesus. Y'all see how this is all biblically based, but it's all relationally sound. Because you're going to be falling in love with Jesus. And as you fall in love with Jesus, now we're going to be saying, I want to do it just like Jesus. 
I'm not looking to do it like the popular way. Hey, sister, I'm not looking to do it like everybody else out here is doing it. I'm going to first look at Jesus. A lot of times we look at how man does it and then we go to Jesus later on, later on, later on. No, no, no. We are going to first look at how Jesus did it and then we're going to look at how man is doing it. We're going to take it back to the Jesus model. We're going to chew the fat and spit out the bones. Hallelujah. I believe that 2019 is going to be a year where we're marching in such a stable faith, such a stable faith, even in the hellish times of high waters. We are going to be walking in such a stable faith because of what we did these 90 days. Amen. Does anybody have any questions about that? Did you guys get the themes for all three months? Let me know because I, I, I I'm not going back over the whole discourse, but I can, I can read them out for you. Hallelujah. Reset, reveal, release. Worship, wisdom, the work. Worship, wisdom, the work, okay? All right, Psalms, Proverbs, the Gospels, Book of Acts. This goes alongside with whatever the Lord is already talking to you in your study time. Let me rock back and forth, hallelujah. All right, so let's talk about your study time. Let's talk about your prayer time. So you have to set your prayer times. Day and night. And in between. The in between time is we have to learn to invite God back into the day. We got to invite the Holy Spirit. Guys, we do so much in our own strength. We solve so many problems in our own strength. We do it a lot until we hit a wall and then that's when we get to pray. And the Holy Spirit is like, if you would just pray all the time, if you would just talk to me all the time, you wouldn't hit the wall. Right? And so sometimes during the day, we're training ourselves to partner with the Holy Spirit all the time. That's why we're setting our alarm. That's it. It's relational. That's it. So I set mine every hour because you know what? I'm like that. Like I'm, you know, I need a lot of help. Hallelujah. And at first it's like, man, and people are looking at you like, man, like, dude, like really your alarm is going off again. And I, you know, if, if you're in a meeting, you don't have to get up and leave the meeting. Right. I just sit there and I'm just like, Holy Spirit, you know, and a room full of notes playing. Like in my heart, I'll be like, okay, Holy Spirit, thank you for this moment that we are in. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving me insight for anything that I overlooked. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for forgiving me, for edging you out. Any place that I've had ego, edge God out. Any place that I've had ego and I'm just like pushed you to the side. Hey, sister. Right? And so, and that takes like five minutes maybe. If you have a lunch, I don't have lunch. If you have a lunch period, then you can walk and talk to God. Right? Maybe he'll go into deep intercession. Maybe he'll, he'll tell you, you know what? I just want you to walk the grounds in my presence. That's it. That's it. So we're all day long, we're going to be concentrating on the person of the Holy Spirit, our helper. We're going to learn to ebb and flow with the Holy Spirit. I know we think we know how to, but we really don't. Right? He is our helper. He is our comforter. Come on, guys. He is the one that understands what God wants, when God wants it, how God, he understands the Father. Right? Because they are one. And so we've got to learn to submit. We've got to learn to listen. We, we, we've got to learn all of that. So that's what we're doing. So set your alarms. I do it every hour. You don't have to. Depending on your work, how you work, right? That may, not, that may be inappropriate. So maybe you do every two hours. Yep. Uh, maybe do it every two, just whatever. Not religious, relational, relational, okay? And just invite him in. It ain't going to be no big to do. No, my alarm is going off. Everybody stop as I talk to the Holy Spirit. Don't be weird. Stop it. Don't be weird. Don't be weird. Don't be weird. Okay. All right. Um, and then set your time. So if you're taking notes, put it on your paper. Okay, God, when do you want me to pray and study? All right, let's deal with this. If you have an issue and it don't matter if you do, so what? We all have those issues. We all go into, um, 
Amen. We all go into seasons where sometimes it's a little bit harder. If you have those issues where it's when it's time for you to sit down and pray, like really commune with the father, you get like ants in your pants and then you feel like you really go in and you've only been there for like five minutes right? Or you're, you know, you sleep to the the very last minute, you sleep to the very last minute, and then you're like, I'm going to speak in tongues in my car all the way to work, (laughs) right? Uh, Yeah, no. For 90 days, we are going to, on purpose, set a date. And so we're going to ask him, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Right? So if you're dating someone, right? And you're like, I want to go. This is when I want to do it. It's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. That's, isn't that what we do with God? I get up at 5 a.m. because really it becomes easy for you. I pray. I lay on my face. And oh, and God is like, well, you know what? Really your time of prayer is 11 p.m. But you on Facebook. Sips tea. Right? So... Everybody's prayer time, everybody's study time is going to look very, very different. Ask him, when does he want his date with you? Now, this is maybe one of the hardest, but it's going to be the most rewarding part. Every time you get up and you have that date, it's going to be so rewarding. It's going to be so rewarding. Right? So the first two weeks or so, it's going to be, you know what I'm saying, it is what it is. For those of you guys who already get up, I see you. I see you. It's a setup. It's a setup because now he's pushing you. So that means you may have to rearrange your whole schedule, your whole life. The kingdom is always moving. God is always calling us into deeper realms and revelation with him. And so, you know, you get up at 4.30 and, you know, because it just works and that's what you do. Now he may be saying, I need you to get up at 3.30. I know it. I know. I know, boo. And then at nighttime, I don't, I don't know if you guys know this. Why do we get on at 7 p.m.? This is the apostolic watch. This is the apostolic watch. Then the prophetic watch, right? So... What we release here, right, goes into the spirit realm and the the prophetic watch, uh uh-huh, the prophetic prayer watch, what the apostle prayer watch, the apostolic prayer watch does, now they begin to prophesy the movement. I don't know if y'all know that. Yeah, yeah. So I always have really good study time doing the the, the prophetic prayer watch. 9 p.m., downloads after downloads. I mean, I'd be like, what? Whoa, wow. (laughs) Right? Right? So studying your scripture, doing a particular prayer watch, I'm telling y'all, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. Because it's prayer. It's a part of prayer. We cannot pray without the word. We cannot pray without revelation. We cannot pray without Holy Spirit. And how can we hear and have faith Unless we hear the word, you know, all that good, right? Anyway, anyway, so yeah, so ask God what he wants from you and when he wants it from you. If you have an issue with sitting still, set your alarm, but you're not tethered to this alarm. This is not religious. And for people who are like, well, I'm going to pray for 20 minutes and I'm going to get up. Okay, don't do that because this is about relationship. Right. And so for those of us who get up just in time where we give God like 45 minutes after you done brush your teeth, after you done made your coffee, after you done walked around and got some boogers out your eyes, after you done sat down and you really gave God like 28 minutes. And now it's like, well, it's time for me to go to work. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Hey, God. No. <laughs> no. Absolute relationship. And we wouldn't like that if people did that to us. Right. If people did that to us, we got to, this is the same as relationship. God wants to deal with us in relationship, right? And so if you had a friend or your husband or wife was like, hey, I know, I know, you know, your love language is um, quality time. All right, let's sit here and watch a 30 minute program and then I'm out. 
I got things to do, boo. You will be like, keep it. Go somewhere else. I'm good. No, thank you. But we do it to God all the time. All the time. Even the old heads who, you know, you've been up and you've been praying and you've been, I do this all the time. I do this all the time. I do this all the time because I am so holy. Really? If we went through your prayer time, we'd be like, I'm talking myself included. I'll be all over the place. I'll be doing something. Uh, because, man, certainly when I, if I open the Bible, if I open the Bible, then I'm like, the commentary. Oh my gosh, what is this word? What is this word? God is like, come on. <laughs> right? Because that's what I like. That's what I like. So I've been sitting before God for an hour and a half. An hour and a half. And I've been like, scripture, scripture, scripture. <laughs> right? And I, it's, it's, it's how it works. But what if the Lord just wanted me to sit in his presence and soak? But I always do what I want to do. Right? And so this is really concentrating on what does God want? How does God? We'll get so much more. Right? And why does this matter to me? I'm just going to tell you why this part matters to me a lot. Because when I study Jesus, and that's who I'm telling you guys, that's who I study. I study Jesus. I study Jesus. And then I begin to study the prophets. I begin to study after Jesus. I study everybody else and how they ebbed and flowed. And, I, and Jesus, when he gets to, when he's dealing with the people, when he's dealing with the, having to feed the 4,000 and the 5,000, when he's dealing with the woman at the well, when he's dealing with um, the man with the withered hand, when he's dealing with the, the dead, when he's dealing with the little girl who was only sleeping in Lazarus, he never petitions the father. He never says, I'm going to put you on my prayer list. He never says, well, me and the apostles and the disciples, we about to go pray. And we don't call fast. He never, never, never does that. So he's, <laughs> there's something to this worship and wisdom. There's such a revealing and an unveiling in the presence of the Lord that sometimes we got to chase it. Sure, leave your old head. You have to chase it. You're going to have to let him take you apart. The deeper that we go into this thing called religion, the more we move away from relationship. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. There's so many things coming from so many different places, so many different places. And the father is saying, well, all that is good. Is it for you? Let me lay out a plan for you. Let me lay out my plan for you. All that stuff, let it become secondary. Let it be a supplement and let me be your main. Relationship over religion, right? And so, you know, you just got to lose a lot of practices and words we say and things we do and how we read the Bible and why we like the same scriptures all the time. So he's just really going to, I believe for some of us, he's going to crush our prayer life. My prayer life gets crushed every so many months, <laughs> right? He's going to crush your prayer life. He's going to like show, dangle some things and show you some things that you're doing and you picked up along the way that were for pe from people and that were not from him. Just ain't got nothing to do with him. He's, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't biblically sound. It's just noise. Okay, so um, set an alarm if you struggle. And what's going to happen is when you do what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do, you're going to see that the struggle is just going to dissipate. And you'll struggle with getting up from his presence. So make sure during these 90 days you leave enough space for the timing of God. Some days God may release you real quick. Some days he may not, he may hold on to you for a little while. Leave space. Leave space for the presence of God. Does this make sense? Amen. So we got our, you're going to ask him for your prayer and study time. Why? Because we're fasting for 90 days. It's okay. It's okay. And this is, this is just practice. And so you said it again. And you said it again, mama, and you said it again, and you said it again until you get it right. I don't know why, but can I just be honest, guys? I don't know why we feel like when it comes to, yep, 
when it comes to the spiritual disciplines i.e. relationship with the father getting to know him like we feel like we should just know how to do it if you don't know how to love your kids and your father's being evil and right if we don't know how to love ourselves if we don't know how to love ourselves why do we think we're just going to get this right off the rip why do we think we're just going to be able to hop into a fast and do it correctly no, you just get, you fall off, you get back up. You fall off, you get back up. You fall off, you get back up. You're meeting with the grace of Jesus. You're meeting with the mercy of Jesus. You're meeting with the relationship aspect of Jesus because he's there with you every single time. When you hit the snooze, he like, yeah, we hit the snooze. He's right there. That's the whole point, right? It's not to beat ourselves up, but it is to be awake and aware and to put on discipline. Because here's the thing. If we want to leave this side of glory, having done kingdom, we're going to need some discipline. We got all the grace in the world. We got all the mercy in the world, but we're going to need hardcore discipline. Right. And so these things are just showing us things about ourselves It's not to beat ourselves up. But hey, at least he loves us enough to show us this. Right. Right. No. So you do it again tomorrow. Do it again tomorrow. Right. And so that's the thing is relationship, 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 relationship over religion. God loves the try. God loves the try. He loves it because you're focused on him right? He loves it. He loves it. And so eventually he will make it easier and easier because some things need to break off of us. Some things need to break off of us. So I don't know if Hair Angel is still on here. Today. She came for me today in the spirit of Jesus and the Holy Spirit of Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, but it was all truth. And so one of my main, I'm just being real. Can I just be honest? One of my main issues it's people it's people so it's just like I have a lot of stuff like coming at me so I've got all of these things I've got all these responsibilities I've got these contracts that you know money that's how I pay the bills I've got these contracts I got all these things I gotta make new content I've got I've got all of this work and then people 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 do this people talk to me pray for me people 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 and so she'll text me and she'll be like hey before you get started writing today because she's the one that comes at me a lot about the writing. Before you get started writing today, can I blah, 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 blah. I'm like, um, I don't think writing was on the agenda today. Right? And so it's just a gentle reminder over these 90 days. God is saying, look, look, you're going to have to serve me before you serve them. Because by serving me, by default, you're going to serve them. If this is making sense. And so it means you may have to shut some things down. I've already been honest over these 90 days on Periscope, we may have to cut back. I'm just being honest. We may have to cut back. I'm going to have to set ministry days and like a day and schedule people and talk to you and pray for you then. I can't do this sporadic stuff. And I'm tired and I'm drained. And I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the, this is the, I'm telling you, I'm in the middle of my prayer time. I mean, I'm going in. You know how I go in. This is me going in. And then I get a phone call. And I know it's somebody who is saying, hey, agree with me about Jesus. Because I don't want anybody to feel a certain way, right? I don't want you to feel, I don't want you to feel, feel, feel the now, you know what I'm saying? And, I'm, and so then uh, if you're drained and then you got to do this and then the contract's calling and they're looking for the, they want to meet and meet and meet and meet and meet and you know you're supposed to meet. And then you got stuff to do with other businesses and you got what the writing you're supposed to do, you got study you're supposed to do. And then, you know what I'm saying? So the enemy is all up in there saying, boop, 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 boop. So you just going to have to serve Jesus. Right? You just going to have to serve Jesus. Yep. And so for me, this is, so she said to me today, whoo, it was so prophetic. She said, okay, well then you just go to Jesus and you tell him that you want to be a phone prophet. <laughs> I was like, 
even dressed because I had a meme. I, you know, and I was, I was like, she's like, well, you tell Jesus you want to be a phone prophet and you'll just give your anointing back. <laughs> I said, a phone prophet? <laughs> I mean, I texted back and I was like, I said, well, I said, well, maybe I'll be a good phone prophet. <laughs> you know, and then she was like, we, we, you know, we, we have great sense of humor. So then she was like, look, a phone prophet is for one. Do the work of Jesus, and that's for many. Drops mic, exit stage left, right? But I need that. And that's what these 90 days are about, and nobody is off limits, right? We ain't off limits. We, and, and so we have to understand that this is Jesus pulling your card. This is the Holy Spirit saying, you know what? Tomorrow really isn't promised. What are you doing? And so even though it looks like you're serving me because you're serving people, you would do so much more if you would serve me. And then by default, you're serving me and doing the tasks I put before you, they will be served. And so, yes, we're going to learn a lot. And so a lot of times by this discipline, things are automatically cut away because we pick up so much during the year. That's why I love these 90 days. We pick up some new habits. We pick up ideas and ideologies. While they sound good, they're, they don't have the sound of God. It sounds good. It looks good. But is it God? Right? Right. Um, all right, so let's talk about fasting. Right? you got to have the set times of prayer, and this has to be 90 days of communing with the Father because you're in a 90-day fasting cycle. You're in a 90-day fasting cycle, right? Fasting without prayer is just a diet. Just a diet, right? So... Um, we need those times of prayer, right? We need those times of just concentrating on the communion aspect with God. All right. So we explained this yesterday. You can make your list of what you want to give up. Make a list. Ask God how he wants to get you to give it up. He may say all of these things all 90 days, Right? He may say October, this and this. November, this, this and this. December, this, 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 this and this. You may just give up one thing. Not about religion. It's about relationship, but it's going to have to cost you something. So if you only eat meat once a week and you're like, I'm giving up meat for 90 days. I guarantee you, you will become a carnivore. By week number three, you will be craving so much meat. This happened to me. I was trying to be funny. I was like, oh, I got this. I'm going to give up. Blah, blah. And it was like something I didn't even need. Like everybody else is struggling with. And I was like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to do, I'm going to do what everybody else is doing. Man. I was like three weeks into it. And I was like, I want this. I want this. I want no. So that's what I'm saying. Look. It's got to be a stretch. It's got to be something that's going to make you like, wow, I really need you, Lord, to do this. But take it to him so he can develop the plan and give you how you are going to do it. So it's 90 days. You're giving up something all the time. But then you will have concentrated fasting days. Right? So in the month of November, you may do the Daniel's fast. Right. Or in the month of October, you give up such and such. And then every Wednesday, you do 12 to 12 or every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you do 12 to six. Does this make sense? And then when you get into November, you do water fasting on those days. And then when you get into December, maybe you do a couple of dry fasting days, but you're going to be fasting inside of your fast. That makes sense. So prayer is going to be key, one, to sustain you. Prayer is going to be key to protect you. Prayer is going to be key because you're going to be experiencing all sorts of breakthrough, all sorts of breakthrough. And the people around you are going to really be experiencing breakthrough. 
really experiencing breakthrough. The people around you will be experiencing breakthrough too. So that prayer piece is so key, but so is your fasting piece. But again, don't make it so top heavy where you can't do it. I'm going to do dry fasting for 40 days. I don't know if Dr. Kim is still on here, but you may need to see her. Day number four. Right? Don't do something you ain't never did, but you got to practice it. You got to ease yourself into it. You got to use wisdom. Right? Right? Okay, so that's fasting portion of it. But then also with that, what you got to ask the father, what in your life is a distraction, an idol or a high place? What comes to deter you from dot, 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 dot. So we may have to give up some social media. I did a vegan Daniel fast, but I learned my fasting prayer life was terrible. Yeah, that's what fasting does. It opens our eyes, right? <laughs> that's crazy. I love it though, because I've learned some crazy stuff. Jesus. Anyway, yeah, so um, what's a high place? What, where are the idols? I don't have any idols. I just, you know, I love God and I'm holy. Holy, holy, there's your idol. Right. Netflix. Come on. Right? Um, social media. Um, I don't know. YouTube. There you go. Twiddling your thumbs. Talking on the phone. Uh, people. You know, certain people. Is every time you get ready to do something. Hey, girl. I'm in the neighborhood. You ready? Unless you're ready to pray, you can pray, right? <laughs> so, what is in your life that is causing you to not fully engage and embrace in the spiritual disciplines and in the work that you're supposed to do? And we're just going to have to get rid of them. And so however the Lord wants you to do that. So it may be, you know, we fast from food. I mean, I know people say you go on fast from this, fast from this, abstain, fasting those food. Because here the things that we're saying we're fasting from, you don't need. Without food, you would die. After so much time, right? And so it really is humbling to your body. Because your body needs food and water. You don't need social media. You don't need your phone. You don't need, you, these are man-made created things, right? So when we're talking about fasting, we're talking about things that God created inside of a system for us to stay alive. So you are shunning that and you're saying to him, you are the substance and the sustenance to keep me from what I need to function as a human. You don't need these things. Right. And so it's, it's called discipline. It's called it's called say it's no. Right. So whatever it is, be honest and ask the Lord, how do you want me to do this? If I have any addictions, right, if you have any sugar addictions, put it down there and be honest, because those things are going to be a little hard to grapple with. They're going to be a little bit hard. You didn't get here overnight. You didn't get here overnight by faith. We believe God just like that, but at the same time, you didn't get here overnight and God wants to deal with the deeper issues. He wants to deal with the root issues of what caused you to get here. And so if we always on Facebook or YouTube because you're bored, why are you bored and you've got so many things to do? Why are you bored and you've got a business to push out? Why are you bored and you, you know what I'm saying? Why are you bored? God wants to deal with those deeper issues. God wants to deal with those deeper issues. And so, you know, the process of healing is so loaded with value. And so that's, so don't shun the process because the process, the process of healing is loaded with value, loaded with value. And that's where that breaker anointing piece comes. And then when you deal with other people who are going through the same thing, that's the maintenance piece to deliver it. If I don't know the root, if I don't know the why, if I don't understand the cause, it can easily come back. But from what? Right? What are you escaping from? What are you escaping from? We got to deal with that. And why are you running? Why are, we, why are you retreating? Why are you using things to medicate? What is it? Right? Right, right. And we, 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 yeah. 
Well, I'm adulting, yeah. So there's there's the thing. God's not saying you can't enjoy yourself and enjoy your time and enjoy your life, but when it comes into where it becomes a, a lot, that you're not you're you're going through your life and you don't really like your life because all you're doing is adulting, and God is saying the joy juice, the joy juice is doing my will. Right? You get joy from the will of God. So if you work nine to five and you and it's so hard and arduous and people are crazy and there's so much warfare on your job and you got so much assignment on your job, then God says, I give you wine. Come come here, Ecclesiastics. Read the book. Read it. It is the gift of God for man to enjoy his labor. That's the book. That's the book, guys. So when you come from your 40 hour, you should be energized to do whatever else God is telling. It is the gift of God for man to enjoy his labor. I'm yelling at y'all. So why aren't we? What's going on? What's draining us? Why is it draining us? We don't know what we don't know. So now we need to like enter that, pull that into that piece into our prayer uh, closet what's going on and so everything that comes up in these 90 days we're facing it head on so then uh on your list you talk about things that you were supposed to do in this year not just you know the assignment of the father talking about some create this start a business blah 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 but were you supposed to you know deal with your credit were you supposed to have a certain amount of money saved up were you supposed to reconcile in some relationships what is undone what is undone that you said yes to the Lord? What's undone? And so we got to take a blank sheet of paper into the presence of the Lord and say, okay, God, show me what's undone. And then give me the grace. Give me the grace to file this away as completed. So now we're coming after that start something and don't finish it. You will finish everything you start. God can trust you with what he gives you because you're going to finish it, but that takes practice, right? So everything that's undone, God, show me those undone things. And over the 90 days, give me a plan to complete these. Yes, yeah, this, this is a hard one. This is up there with like giving up coffee, right? <laughs> right? So it could be a lot of things. God may have said, you know, he wanted you to get into counseling and you just haven't. Right? And so we're in every prayer line get, trying to get deliverance. And God said, no, I told you to get, go to counseling. I told you to go to counseling. Counseling. And you still haven't gone to counseling. You need to get into counseling over these next 90 days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So take a blank sheet of paper into the presence of God and say, okay, show me what's undone. Show me what I haven't done. What vow I made and I didn't pay it. Right? Um... And I think that may be, that's all my, okay. So we're going to do some concentrated teachings over these 90 days. Courts of heaven is going to be one. Teaching on angels is going to be one. Because we're going to need both. Jesus, we're going to need both. Hallelujah. But we're going to do them on Zoom. So you guys tell me, um, do you want to do just like one a month? So that would be three over the consecration or how many, how many of those special moments would you like to have? Along with prayer. So I think we should come together on Zoom where everybody can turn their cameras on and stuff and we can, we can do prayer as a group together. So I say three times at least for that. So that's already three times. Once a month, okay. Twice a month. Okay, so the twice a month could be one time all of us praying, one time teaching. Is that okay? Okay, and that's what we'll do. So I'm going to send out, um, if, if, if I have your email, I need your email. I'm going to send that email and it's going to have the Zoom link in it. It's going to be the same link. It's going to be the same link every single time and the dates will be attached. The dates will be attached to the link. Keep it. Okay. If you 
have people who are going to do this 90 days with us. They can get the link. Yep, they can get the link. Or you can call in. You can also call in on Zoom too. Um, add the guidelines to what? To the, to, to the prayer? To the prayer? Or what? Because I don't want to assume that's what you're talking about. <laughs> to the email. What do you mean? The guidelines to the email. Rules for the email. Just get, I just need your email. Clearly I am missing something completely. Yeah, I just need your email. Right? That's all I need, right? Oh, so you're saying in the email you want everything that we just said? Yeah, the times will be, the times will be in the email. You're going to if you go to this profile here, okay. If you go to this profile here, there's a link for my email. Just click it. Send your email. So you want so everything that we just said, you want that in the in the email too? Jesus. I was like, y'all are taking notes. Yeah, I'm slam. I know because if you're for, if you're forwarding it to somebody. Okay. Oh Lord Jesus. Okay. I should have been recording this, voice recording this. Okay. Um we'll do. She said, ask God for your guidelines. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. No, because there's people who are um, yeah, the we're gonna leave this up. The, there's gonna be some people who guys that are going to be, thank you, Chastity, that are going to be new to this all together. And so we do want to make it as easy as possible for them. Because that, that makes sense. Because they may have never fasted before. They may have never, 90 day consecration. What are you talking about? Right? And so invite people who, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, so the replay is going to be up. You know what I mean? But um, right. So uh, in the email, you're absolutely right. Because we do want you to invite people. Like if you have family members, because this is so friendly. Because this is about Jesus. The center of it is Jesus. We're, the, the outcome is Jesus, right? So while it, the, the discipline piece is there, the grace piece is so huge. And so this is a really great way for somebody to really change their life. This is really huge for some people who, who may not be connected, right? So, yeah, so... Um, We'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll put all that stuff in the email. Um, but again, there is, it's very loose. So they're, they are going to have to, you're going to have to explain it a little bit. Like when they choose their own, so you have to explain that a little bit. Um, so yeah, so if I don't have your email, you're not going to get an email. Yeah. Okay. Amen, sister. I, if I don't have your email. You're not going to get an email. Let me repeat that. If I don't have your email... <laughs> You're not gonna get an email. Keep the email because that'll have it'll be the exact same link every single time. Every single time. I will be putting more on the website. If you don't have a website, I'm gonna be doing some decrees. I'll be putting some prayers up there on the website. Or just email it. It works better if you email it. It's just right. Just go to this profile and just click the link and it's going to take you right to my email. It's going to take you right to my email because it's easier for me because it's already there, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Um, anisilliman.com, right? Yeah. Anisilliman.com. Oh, 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 oh. And this is what the Lord told me um, the other night. I was sleeping. I am going to, I am going to pray from the book Irrevocable. I'm going to decree and pray and stuff over you guys using that book, if that's okay. He said to revisit that. So I'm going to start back doing that in the, in our consecration. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Okay, does anybody have any questions about any of this information? I hope it was clear. It was clear. I hope it was concise. Hope you guys are excited. And it's, um, the book is called Irrevocable. It's just um, prayers and decrees that are taken from Psalms 103. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be, so if you have the book, pull it out. If you don't, you can order it from Amazon or you can get it from my website. Um, and we're going to be going through those decrees and, and prayers and stuff like that. But when we go through the Psalms, I really feel this is really a, a, a wind on Psalms right now. So this is going to be good. October is going to be just good. Now, when it comes to Periscope, I don't know what that's, that schedule is really going to look like. I'm just being honest with you guys. Um, in October, I'm traveling um, straight. Um, <laughs> I travel one week, October 8th, come back on the 13th. We do the refuge in Atlanta. And then October 22nd to November the 3rd, I'm traveling to four or five different places. So I don't know what that's going to look like. I'm just going to be honest with you. Middle of November is going to slow down a lot, you know, but I don't know what that's going to look like. And I don't, California is, that's where I'm going to mostly be. That time difference is crazy right so I want to be I do want to be faithful with what the Lord is saying to do so we may drop down to two days a week but I have to make sure let's be honest guys for me I have to make sure that I'm doing right by God with this consecration right I've got to make sure I'm doing right by God by this consecration so we may drop down to two days a week and then we may do the twice a month just for like October, half of November, and then we'll kick it back up again. In December, we're going to do more Zooms. We're going to do a lot more prayer. But um, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. Yep, I did. If I don't respond to your email, I got it. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. If I didn't respond to your email, I didn't get no plan. Um, you should get the powder. You should get the powder. If you go to the profile, if you go to the profile on Periscope Sister, you'll see it. It's, it's the link. Just If you just press on the link, it'll take you right to the, the email. Get the powder. And it'll be a little bitty tiny scooper. And just do like a fourth of the scooper, then a half of the scooper, until you get used to that flush. Yeah. So are you guys okay with that? I just, I just want to ask you guys, for the people who are faithful and we always on here together, chilling, are you okay with twice a week? Certainly October, because I'm going to be traveling. Like, okay. Okay. And I know the Lord did say to do some early morning prayer, but I'm not going to tell y'all when, because it'll be at 3 a.m. in the morning. Just catch it when you get up. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like, just catch it when you get up. So, um, I will be doing... Some mornings when I get up, I will be doing the Periscope where it's just a voice. And I'll be doing some 3 a.m. prayer when I get up. I'll be praying from 3 a.m. to about 3.45. And, um, and uh, it'll just be random. When I'm in California, I'll probably be doing that more. Just, you know, when you see, um, if you see it come up, then just watch it because prayer is prayer. It's going to work when you hear it. So, but that's not really, you know, if you're up and you're on, you're up and you're on. But if not, then just see it. Amen. So, um, I love you guys. The next time we see each other, it's gonna, we're going to be in consecration. <laughs> yes, so Monday, we are going to be in consecration. Monday is October 1. So, let me pray for you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I take this piece of paper with the guidelines and I say that this represents the list of the people who are going to do this consecration until so we cover everybody. And so even God, when this video is up on YouTube and maybe five years from now and somebody sees us and they say, I want to go into a 90 day consecration. God, we're asking you for an anointing to do this. We're asking you, God, for the grace to do this. We're asking you, God, to release angels to help us, angels to hold us, angels of guidance, angels of assistance, angels of revelation, angels to assist and breakthrough. We're asking you, Father, to give us an ear to hear your God-breathed words, an ear to hear your heartbeat, an ear to engage the Holy Spirit. 
We thank you, God, for this time of relationship and communion and community and communication. We thank you, God, that as your people lift their list up to you, that, God, you would bless it. You would approve it, God. You would give it the head nod. And that, God, we will see breakthrough like never before. We will experience coming into a deeper dimension and deeper depths of your word and your will and your heartbeat for us. We ask you, God, to allow these 90 days for us to fall in love with you all over again, Jesus. We want to fall in love with you over and over and over. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke any mindsets of religion. We rebuke any mindsets of perfection. We rebuke the mindset that I've got to work, work, work to get the grace. We rebuke that and we decree and declare that this shall be about relationship only. And if and when we mess up, we repent it beforehand. And we say, God, we need help. We need help. And so, Father, I take all of your people into the courtroom right now. Yes, I'm going to do it. We take all of your people into the courtroom of heaven right now. And we say to you, God, if there's any accusations, if there's any uh, misconceptions, if there's anything that would hinder, hallelujah, them moving into this fast, even the people who are going to be invited on this fast, and the enemy is saying, trying to hold them back, the enemy is, 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 is blinding them so they can't see, or covering their ears so they cannot hear, we intercede in the courtroom on their behalf, and we say, Father, give them a moment of peace in their mind, in their eye gate, in their ear gate, so that they can choose to engage you in relationship. Father, there are some people who just need to know the love of God. They need to understand that you love them. And so, God, let these 90 days be just that. Let there be breakthrough in family. Let there be breakthrough in marriages. Let there be breakthrough in identity, God. Hallelujah. Over these 90 days. And so in the courtroom of heaven, we throw ourselves on the mercies of, our, of the court. We throw ourselves, God, on the mercy of the court, our life, our 2018, everything. It is before you and we say, yes, we did it. Yes, we don't understand. Yes, we've done some things that, God, your approval was not on. Yes, we engaged with people that your approval was not on. We thought some things. We did some things. We covered it under, under a religious guide. And we said, because, well, everybody else is doing it. Because everybody else. Because it's okay. And we knew it wasn't okay with you. God, we're saying to you before we even start, please forgive us, God. We want you and we want the purity. Hallelujah. And so God, over and over and over in the scripture says, he who has an ear, let him hear. And so Father, I thank you that there is the releasing of a clarion call from the courts of heaven for you pulling your people close to you. You're pulling your people. You're wooing your people. You're calling your people. Let your people hear the clarion call. And so God, we know that we're not the only people who are consecrating. Every group, every group that names the name of Jesus, every group that says Jesus is the son of God, every group, every church, Hallelujah. Every scope, every Facebook group, whatever they are and wherever they are, we join ourselves with them and we thank you, God, that it will be a successful relationship building between now and November. Thank you, God, that a sound is arising in the earth and it is the sound of a people drawing nigh unto thee. It is a sound of a people who are seeking you while you may be found. It is a sound, my God. It is a sound of your people who are called by your name, answering repenting, acknowledging, hallelujah. Hear from heaven, God, in these 90 days. Hear from heaven these 90 days. Hear from heaven these 90 days. Hallelujah. Hear from heaven. And so we receive the help. We receive the new edicts, we receive all of the downloads, we receive all of the decrees, we receive the revelation, we receive it, we receive it now, we stand at the threshold of December 31st, 2018, and we decree and we declare that this has been the best times of our life. <laughs> Hallelujah. I cover your people, I cover their stuff. I cover their cars. I cover their homes. There will not be any shenanigans with cars. There will not be flat tires. There will not be broken down cars. There will not be accidents and incidents. There will not be people texting and 
running them off the road. There will not be tire blowouts. There will not be house fires. There will not be any issues with their kids. There will not be any issues with the kids' grades. There will not be any uprising in the souls of our children. There will not be any uprising in the soul of our spouse. We cover them. We cover their homes. We cover their set, their, their, their bodies, their persons, and their mind in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That for the next 90 days, the joy of the Lord will well up on the inside of your people and depression and darkness and deafness and melancholiness has no right and hope and has no chokehold and has no stronghold in the name of Jesus. We release a sound. We release the sound of deliverance. We release the sound of deliverance upon finances over these next 90 days in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's some people, God, who are going to say, I'm one of them, that we're going to sow certain things into certain places. Thank you, God, that you will supply seed to the sower. If that's you, you will supply seed to the sower and bread for food. And those two different things. And so, Father, we thank you for the seed. We receive the seed. We will not eat the seed. We will sow the seed. We will plant the seed. We will hollow the seed. The seed will go back to you in the name of Jesus. But on the other side, we, your people, shall eat the bread. We, your people, shall engage the bread. We, your people, shall have the bread. We, your people, shall eat in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we cover finances. We thank you, God, that there will not be any pop-up in business issues. There will not be pop-up in housing, housing issues. That God's stability would rest upon your people for these 90 days. That you, God, would pour out a blessing that there is not room enough to receive. And so, God, as we stand in September... Hallelujah. There are intercessor. I stand before you, God, in the court of heaven, and I say on behalf of your people, prove you now. We prove you now in this. You open up the window in heaven. And you poured out a blessing that there is not room enough to receive over these next 90 days. Hallelujah. And so prophetically, your house is filled with bread. Your cabinets are filled with bread. Your pockets are filled with bread. Come on, guys. Your extended family filled with bread that even their extended families will not get hit. Hallelujah. Their extended families will not get hit. Their extended families will not get hit in the name of Jesus financially. That their extended families will not get hit in their health. That there will not be people getting sick and people having uh, issues and people dying over these next 90 days. We thank you, God, that they are covered on every side. Shields of faith, of, 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 of favor be erected. The covering of favor be upon their heads in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The answer to Jabez. Come on, guys. We always pray the prayer of Jabez. That's what's up. That's awesome. How about we begin to pray the answer? And the Bible says, and he, he gave him, he answered him. And so, God, we thank you of the same way that you answered Jabez, the same way that you expanded Jabez, the same way that you heard his cry, the same way that you attuned your ear, the same way that you placed your hand upon him, that he would not cause evil and it would not grieve him. And you made him to a city of scribes is the same way. Hallelujah. If you answer Jabez, you will answer your people. And so, Father, we receive the answer of Jabez. We receive the answer of Jabez. Because we always pray the prayer. You need to receive the answer. And so we receive the answer. Hallelujah to Jabez. We receive the answer to the prayer of Jabez. We bless you for the answer. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We receive that we are indeed blessed. Hallelujah. Before we even start the 90 days, we are indeed blessed. We are indeed blessed. We are indeed standing in an enlarged territory. Indeed, already blessed. Indeed, the territory has already been enlarged in the name of Jesus. We receive the answer. 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 We receive the answer in the name of Jesus. And we bless you for it, God. And so, God, we cover your people. This is your fast. This is your consecration. The outcome belongs to you. We dedicate it to you. We dedicate it to you. On Monday, we'll be taking communion. So get your communion. But we de everything that we do, we dedicate it to you. Flesh will not glory in your sight. This is not a man-made constructed thing, but this is a God-made, god will God God-decided thing. Hallelujah. Flesh will not glory. Flesh will not glory. Only God gets the glory. Only God gets the glory. Only God gets the glory and we get the benefit. And so we receive the benefits now in the name of Jesus for these next 90 days. Thank you, God, that your people in their bodies will feel like they've never felt before. 
energy levels through the roof. Thank you that ailments will be healed. Thank you that pain will dissipate. Thank you that diseases will be eradicated. Thank you that God, hair will grow back and wrinkles will disappear because we've stood in the presence of God and the countenance of our Father will be our countenance. We will shine. His face will shine upon us. You will cause your face to shine upon us. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so God, as we rest in your presence, sit in your presence. For these next 90 days, we are expecting you. Say it. You. And so however much we can take, pour it in. However much we can take, pour it in. Hallelujah. And it is in Jesus' name. I hear the Lord saying that he's going to heal some hearts. The Father is saying that there are some people who've had a broken heart. You've had some, some brokenness. It's not, it's not necessarily a broken heart. But there's some broken places. Some broken places. And that's really the reason that's holding you back from a lot of things is the disappointment. It's almost like you can see chips. Right, it's chips. And so the Father is saying that he's healing and he's restoring. He's healing and he's restoring. And he's going to bring some answers to some things. We talk about God healing your memories, God healing your past. And he's going to do just that. And it's go it is going to bring new life to you. It's going to bring new life to you. And so God, for every person on here who is dealing with a broken heart and children, if your children have a broken heart, Something happened. Maybe a parent left, a grandparent died. You had to move. Something happened. And your child had to live with a disappointment. And really, it was a, it's like a crevice was made in their little heart. We thank you, God, that our children will be repaired over these next 90 days. Our children will be set free and delivered over these next 90 days. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Jesus. The Father says that as he's healing these places in your heart, like it's gonna, it's gonna just like change your soul paradigm. That's what I'm hearing you say. Your soul paradigm. Because in our soul is the seat of our intellect, and your intellect is what holds your paradigms. Um, we're praying for you, sister. Wow. Your soul, your intellect is what holds your paradigm. Your paradigm is how you view the world. So how you view the world, if you're not careful, will not be in your spirit. It will be in your soul. And out of our soul is how we deal with people. How we engage things, right? And so the Father is saying that he's healing some places in your, in your heart, in your soul, and it's going to change your paradigm. It's going to change your paradigm. You're going to see things so much different. And so if you, even if you've had to struggle, some of us, you know, you, you really went through and you're, you know, maybe you were homeless or your kids had to move a couple of places and they see you serving God and they see you up in the midnight hour pacing the floor and speaking in tongues. And they're wondering why God, like if she, you know, mom's praying like this and she's doing and she's giving, why are we going through this? And they've got so many questions and the enemy is using those questions to pull your children astray. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you will bring clarity to, the, to these children, that they will see the hand of the Lord. They will have an encounter with God of these next 90 days. Of these next 90 days. For those who have lost parents this year, as we get ready to go into the holiday season, we are covering you with the blood of Jesus. We're not going to tell you not to cry. We're not going to tell you not to grieve because you must grieve. Death is a part of life. But you will not go into depression. Hallelujah. We decree and declare that during those times as you get with family, that you will, you guys will talk about good memories. That even in your family unit, even in that your family unit, that uh, God will cause that to the ranks to close. And that relationships that were not as tight, that they will be tight. They will come closer and they will become tighter and the units will become tighter through this. And so where there will, where this will be soul devastation. Hmm. Hallelujah. We release the God decree over this, 
over these 90 days and this holiday season. And so, Father, please allow their names to come before us in our prayer time. Allow us to say their names as we speak in tongues. As we worship, allow us to release a sound of worship on their behalf when they can't allow us to. And so, Father, thank you for a network of believers, for believers who are going through, especially during this particular time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you that you are the God of comfort. We thank you, hallelujah, for the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, God, you are amazing. We honor you and we pray that these 90 days honor you and you alone. You and you alone. You and you alone. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 So I love you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. We will be on um, Monday. <laughs> she said water. <laughs> Yes, it will. She said water. I'm done. I want to do consecration. What do you want to give up? Vegetables. I want to give up all the vegetables. <laughs> Love it. That, that made me laugh. Amen. 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 Um, yep. Yeah, so Monday, we're in it. Please. I will probably have a cheese it. I think Chess Ch 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 is not on here. Whatever. I'm going to take my communion with what I got on my table. Um, I'll have a cracker. Yeah, so uh, please remember to do that because we're going to take communion. I love you, sister. And for some of us, you may take um, communion every day. That's probably what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to do it every day on the scope. So, um, you know, pray about that. Lift that before the Lord because it is not about religion. It is going to be the best weekend ever. I'm going to be with Dr. Kim. She's going to be preaching. So y'all pray for her as she preaches the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I get to, um, you know, they, they try to make jokes about me and they say like stuff about me. Like, you know, I get bullied in secret. And so I get to, you know, um, take notes to make jokes. <laughs> no, but it's going to be good. It's going to be a really good time. Really excited to meet her people. And to support her and to love her. So y'all be praying for Dr. Kim. Amen. Amen. As she brings the word of the Lord to the people of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Yes. So uh, y'all have a, I keep doing that. Sorry guys. Um, I forget it has a flashlight on it. Um, y'all have a really great weekend and I love you. And welcome to the consecration. Amen. All right guys. Good night. Love you.